Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of a very Cornish Let's Play of Age of Decadency. Now, at last time, we'd been approached by Feng. I think it's Feng, yes, yeah, Feng. Feng, the lawmaster, to get rid of a rival competitor. And we were sort of mulling it over, trying to figure out what we were going to do. We'd also, also had sort of like been told about the sort of Legion Watch or sort of I don't know, the Imperial Guard, which I believe is sort of like a like UN like peacekeeping force that sort of tries to keep order across the country. So we had that to sort of do. What's this? Some poor bloke in a rundown house, apparently. But before we do any of that, I think we should probably go back and talk to Feng about about this contract. Now I don't personally want to annoy this to annoy the governor, but if maybe I can make some money out of it somehow. Problem about Cassius, how much are you willing to pay me? Trade. No, oh, he's willing to pay me fifty Imperials. Trading, I'm I am wondering I wonder what you do once the new lawmaster settles in. I've heard that it's hard to start begging at such an old age. Fine, sixty Imperials. Right. He's only offering me sixty imperi sixty Imperial gold coins to basically kill someone who's a guest of the lord of this place, so it's probably not the best thing to do. Hmm. Where I can find him? Who's this? Oh, that's lucky he's right there. Right, I can lure him to the house. Maybe I can scare him off. So I still don't want to kill him because obviously he's there as a as a guest of the Lord. Forty year, forty-two year old lawmaster Cassius con contempt contemptuously called young Cassius by his grey-haired colleagues has never understood the appeal of digging through dirt and ruins like a rat. Instead, he preferred to spend his time among the neat, neatly preserved, neatly preserved scrolls, studying the work of many prominent lawmasters of, of antiquity, and hundreds of, accom of accompanying, accompanying comment commentaries he considered indispensable. Master Cassius was working on his second tri track tract, analyzing manifestations of the divine will in the year 4052 when. Antidus, that's the like Lord Antidus em emissaries invited him to Tehran. Cassius arrived early and is getting tired of waiting when when you sewed up and grace him with your company. Is there something you want? Yeah, I'm just gonna sew into Lord Antidus. Lord Antidus has sent me to escort you. What do you want? says the guy at the gate. I, I'd like to introduce you to Master Cassius, who is the personal guest of Lord Ant Antidas. Master Feng asked me to kill him, but as soon as I learned that Lord Antidas was involved, I immediately thought you thought that Lord Antidas would pay you more to keep Cassius alive. You gain new insight, which can be used to increase your skills, and you lose word of honor, which is like my reputation. Can I speak to Lord Antidas? Of course, after you prove your value. I already thought I proved my value, nodding at Cassius. You prove that you have enough common sense to know what's good for you, nothing more. Yeah, I'm gonna fail this. My charm's like at minus thirty by this point. Common sense is a rare commodity these days. Your lucky thing asked me and not some folk who would have slit Cassius's throat without thinking. All I'm asking is for two minutes of Lord of your Lord's time. Prove yourself prove your value and you I'll give you ten minutes. What do I need to do? Wait here while I escort Master Cassius inside. I can use your help in exchange. I'll let you in, let you in, even put you in good word for you. Don't you have your own people to do these things? Good question. You see, my people are valuable, while you, to put it bluntly, are not. Don't worry. I'm, I'm a good judge of talent, and since I don't, I don't, I don't see any. Your task is relatively simple. House, are are. Arielarian? Arielarian. It's digging in some old ruins not f far from Tehran. Apparently it was an old mine, mining facility and some machines are still intact. We even sent, they've even sent for Sorab, which is bad news. He's an expert on old machines. If it has gears, he can fix it. We can't have that. At least you, we need is the Arielarians? Uh, Arielarians? 
what are we doing? Setting up shop in our backyard. So what do you want me to do? Whatever it takes to stop them. Killing always works, but if you're too plebeian for the, for you, you're for your sophisticated taste, try something else. Can you give me any men? Dalia shakes his head. First, we don't know for sure what we're dealing with. I need all the men to ca in case this situation is what it seems. Second, I'd like to see what ca how cap what ca what you're ca what you're capable of. I don't I don't have a problem with that. You don't have a problem with that, do you? What else can you tell me? Not much. Ruins are, are ev everywhere. But we don't have enough money and people to look under every stone. I feel a few weeks ago, a house. Aurelian, Aurelian set up a camp there and started digging. They may have something there, something we don't we don't know about, or they have nothing, and we're just waiting for and they're just waiting for us to, us to give them an excuse to attack Tehran. So he's basically worried that if they send someone recognisable, it will be traced back to them to them and start a war between the cities. Where did they get the supplies? Good question. They're too far away for Madoran. Madaran to be supplied regularly and they aren't and they aren't used to living off the land. Ask around, see what you can find. Is there anything else I can help you with? You ask derisively. Well well if you don't like the first problem, you're definitely not going to like the second one. A gang of raiders captured one of our nobles. Someone should go there and find out what the raiders want. Didn't they tell you what they want? You you say you've a raised eyebrow? It's a funny story, actually. Chuckles. Delar, humorously. A few days ago, a raider walked in and started making demands, claiming that he captured a lord. We didn't take the bastard seriously and used him for target practice. God, that's grim. Then it turned out that some distant relative, Lord Antidas, is re is act really missing. But it was too late. Now my men are very, my men aren't very eager to go over and pay the blood debt. Oh, but you're happy to send us there to die. Such a charming bloke we have to work with. And you're sending me there. You're a, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Very generous of you, you snort. Alright, fine, I'll give it a shot as you walk off. Great, so we're in a situation now where to get in we're going to have to do stuff. And from the sounds of it, it sounds pretty bad. You're standing in front of the Daratan compound, the tall palisade of pointed stakes form a perimeter of the compound augmented by a regular armed patrol. There are two entrances that you can see, one leading to the main building, the other to the guardhouse. Unfortunately, both entrances lie in the shadows of the guard towers, manned by crossbowmen. Talk to Dalar. What do you want? I'm here to see Master Cassius. Maybe I can, like, Persuade Master Cassius that saving his life was a good thing, and you can sell me, me so introduce me to the Lord. Guard, escort, escort Ricatus Cornelia, Cornelia to Master Cassius. Master Ricatus says Cassius, bowing his head slightly. How may I be of assistance? I want to ask you some questions. Is there anything you can teach me? Uh, I mean, this law stuff has to be really interesting, but I don't want to wake, like waste loads of time doing it. Well, certainly, I'm not sure where to start, as you aren't what I would call a scholar. Well, let's try this. Let's try the basics. Cassius subjects you to a remarkably painful lesson on metallurgy, history, and good manners. Fortunately, you manage to pick up on a thing or two before your head goes into self-preservation mode. Your law increases, your crafting increases, and your etiquette increases. Can I ask you something else? Uh, let's try... I want to learn more about the war with the Quint Quintari and the summoned and their summoned allies. God, that's a lot of text. Ah, uh, well... Uh, is there a way to get out of it? No, we're going to have to read for it. Some want to believe that, believe in higher powers and for our allies to be long forgotten gods finally return to aid their children in their hour of need. Others believe, quite arrogantly, I might add, that allies were the allies were killings of other of worldly realms, peers and of peers of the emperor. Even the names are spelled in so, so many different ways that it's almost impossible to tell what the original names were. The one we call Thor Argoth, for example, was originally referred to as Tor. Afogoth and Thoragoth, even the very nature of the High Lord is debated. 
debatable. Many accounts describe the four Kuntari gods as terrifying beast-like creatures. For example, there are several different accounts of the battle Estolios, Estios, Estios, all claiming the same thing. Ul a a Ulexrath rose from the deep and attacked the legions of General Kisan, slaughtering over a thousand soldiers before the Magus forced him to retreat. Magi, Magi, yeah, Magi forced him to retreat. He killed a thousand men. Have you ever read Amana Amanas? Cassius smiles and starts citing, "In battle, in the Battle of Zaghos, Lord Hesbinas sent forth his four beasts in, adv in advance of, his of the phalanx. Neither Galantinus, neither, neither the Galantin Galantines themselves, nor their horses had previously seen such beasts, and were so confused by the unexpected sight that they turned and fled in disorder." In a disorderly route before they were within bow shot. The beast, the beast ploughed through the remaining Gal Galateans legiona legionaries with a devastating effect. Slowly mar the slowly marching beasts, frightful with their wrinkled bodies, were a hideous spectacle, dreadful beyond even the form of horror as we have heard often declared. Do you know what those hideous beasts were? Elephants. So take up what so take what you read with a grain of salt. So they were going on about demons and stuff, so it might not even be demons, they might just have been using drugs or something to make their soldiers super powerful. What happened to these gods? It's a good question, it said that the Quantari's gods were cast into the abyss and that our gods have departed shortly after. Myths and legends rarely give you the answer you seek, Rikatus. That's enough for now. At least our law and stuff increased, which is cool. So, this is sort of like grim fantasy, so it could be that the gods do exist, or you see a man attempting to preach to a crowd of curious onlookers. He He's he's clambered onto a pile of rocks, battered to make him better to make himself heard, despite that it doesn't, doesn't seem to be going well. He's having a, to shout over the jeering. Nah, that's how. Let's see if we can find something more adventurous to do. But there was that block there, and he was talking to us about better armor. Maybe we can investigate that. I'm just going to go back and see if what how Fenrir react. I just did rat him out to the Lord after all. Feng, you here? He's apparently run off. Let's just search his room. In. It's a large, carefully restored document tracing the history of House Daratan throughout the centuries. Turns out the house owes its name to the Battle of Dar Atan, where a certain, where a certain legatus managed to defeat an army of 20,000 of them with less than the Fenafool Legion, so basically about 8,000 blokes. Because each Roman legion was basically 8,000 strong. They did everything, in, all their like regimental sizes and unit sizes were basically in denominations of eight, so it went like, I think, yeah. Yeah, it was an uh, yeah, it was eight. It increases our law skill by one. That's interesting. That's same stuff. Boxes, nothing of interest. Fens desk, notes, candles, wooden materials. It appears that thing is interested in general. Marcus Gal Galibor, famous military tactician and strategist of the old emperor empire. A wooden small wooden box is used as a bedside table. There's nothing of interest inside. Chest. This lying chest is old and broken in some places. It's unlocked and predictably contains nothing of interest. Not that you would expect thing to keep anything of value here. So, it's not like there's anything that we can take. Maybe the stuff on the roof. Boxes filled with junk. Nothing here either. Oh, there's a shortcut at least. Hmm. Now we're in the position that. God, that's grim. No, I suppose they're trying to keep the peace, but even so. Graves of offerings, a grave that's been disturbed. Undertaker. Not greatly wanting to go and see him too soon. 
so what do we do now? I mean, we could go and join the Legion. There was actually someone here, wasn't it? This... Matildas. Matilla... Matilladas? He Wasn't he saying something about... Giving us cheap... Cheap gear? I was suspicious at the time, so I'm just going to quickly save in case this turns out to be ending painfully for us. Let's go and talk to him. You're back. I knew you'd change your mind. Luckily for you, I still have some of the merchandise. Please, please, come with me, my friend. Alright, let's go and take a look. I've got a bad feeling about this. And I was right as well. You follow Matilda to his house. His servants greet you at the door and let you in. They are well armed and armoured, but they are... But these are dangerous times. You never know whom you can trust these days. The room is empty. You turn to ask Patilus where his merchandise is when, you, when his servants draw weapons and attack you without saying a word. We can try and run for it, or we can fight. Let's try fighting. Uh, he's got a knife. Why do we have such a bad hit chance? <laughs> You're in to block most of it, but I mean, one percent. Yeah, we're not going to be able to win this in any stage. got some points left over. Maybe I should have invested more in... Oh, we're getting our ass kicked. We can... Well, there's no way for us to win this, and they're just going to literally beat living daylight out of us. The problem is the little knife-wielding bloke is basically constant, constantly stabbing us in the arm, so we've got no way to actually beat him. See, look, our arm injuries are like minus 60, so we're like Um, great, he's actually disarmed us now, so we have got no attack whatsoever. Can we flee? Why can't I leave? Come on. Come on, I'm standing right next to the door, why won't you let me out? Oh. Just great, so I'm disarmed, I've got like no way to hurt any of them. Yeah, I'm on like, I'm 3% chance to hit these guys. I die. The deals that are too good to be true usually aren't. Nevertheless, deep down inside you wanted to believe people get lucky all the time and get something for nothing. Why couldn't you be one of them? The way you saw it, the universe owes you and it was about time that you paid you in with interest. So instead of doing the smart thing, you followed the trader like a lamb to the slaughter and got yourself killed over, li over what little you had. The universe remains indifferent. Great. So... That tipped toward us something because we are getting beaten badly. I warned you that this game is absolutely nightmar nightmarishly hard. So here we're back again. Let's. Uh I had some spare points lying around. General skill points. 
I mean, I wanted to buff some of this stuff, but... I'm going to have to buff my sword skill as well. So look, it gives us... Sync. For each point of rested in Dag, you get an additional attack bonus free for sword. I'm going to dump some more into that. Got another 10 points. Got to increase that as well. So, with my current level, 23% chance combined with 9% chance on a critical strike. Uh, not great, but could be worse. Wait, what are our stats? My attack is like. Why is it like 22? Attack breakdown. Skill level times 10 plus bonus. Training. Synergy. Perception. Weapons. Helmet. Shield. I'm getting a minus to my attack because of shield. Plus penalty. So wait, if I take my shield off. Yeah, it's, I'm guessing. What am I getting a penalty from? Plus, minus eight for what? Problem is, I actually really need my shield because otherwise, it goes. That's going to kick me in the head. I mean, where's my hit penalty coming from? Oh, it's the hit penalty from the helmet. The hit chance penalty 8% from the helmet. Uh, I need a better weapon. I'm going to go to the blacksmith. Maybe he can give me something for my trouble. Nothing's damaged, so I don't need to repair it that way. Right, I might need to get myself a better sword. And five weapon hardness. I need that sword. I'll sell the Gladius. Sell that. That gives me less penalty. Is that like penalty of ten? That's five. This is like Lucio Segmentar armor, like segmented Legionnaire's armor. So that's got. Basically, you get more hardness and a, a single point more damage resistance. The sheer fact that I'm getting my head caved in. Trying to think what 
do because I'm absolutely getting wrecked at the moment. I think if I buy that, that's most of my money gone. Uh, I need. I need to get get some better gear. not so bad now. But even still we need some stuff. God, I didn't realize I I knew this game was supposed to be hard, but this is this is insane. Alchemist. What else you my friend? Let's see what he has for sale. Let's see, does he have any healing? Ah he does. I'll take three, please. It's most of my money gone. I can't do anything with this, so maybe if traps or something that we had. I mean, scimitars are absolutely beautiful. Like They sort of like have a slashing, chopping motion to them because of the way the blade arcs. It means that you sort of cleave through things because when you slice, this edge sort of like... It basically gives you a larger surface area. It means that you cut more deeply. I mean, we could try doing... Uh, doing the... Um, Legion missions, I mean, that could be possible. We could try bailing out. Let's see what our journal says. Investigate the outpost. I mean, what does our skills look like? We could, our renown is pretty bad. Imperial Guard. I mean, our lore isn't too terrible. We might be able to bluff our way through. You could try that. So I mean, I don't really want to try and... Whoa, world map. This is the world map. It's quite cool. I like it. Let's try... I think this is the Mine Mining Outpost. We still have a new... New land, land the hoy, discover new locations, boost your skill your spirits. Doesn't help us at all. Right. Let's just try and talk away, because there's like six people up here. Sitting in the side of a mountain, the Olarian outpost is protected from prying eyes by a tall wooden palisade that circles it. A guard watches you approach from atop a wooden guard tower. Its high vantage point offers him an unobstructed view of the road leading to the camp. Another guard is posted at the entrance of the outpost behind a small barricade. So from here we can see there's like literally like f at least three people, no, there's four people. Approach. This area is claimed by house. Aurelian says the guard, turning around, turn around and leave the crossbow. Crossbowman and tower take same William Fury action. Right, there's no point. I can't, Im I can't basically impersonate this bloke because my impersonation skills terrible. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm a skilled law master. Would you have any work for me by any chance? Wait here. A few minutes later, the guard returns, followed by. Deaconesis with a, uh, a deaconesis with a quick suspicious eye. Without wasting time or pleasantries, he shows you a small glass tube encased with elaborate metal framework. The tube contains what appears to be a, a constant, constantly shining liquid fire. Do you know what this is? So we can try and kill him, which would still leave us like with three people to fight. And in this game, fighting three people at once is really hard anyway. Or we can try doing a law, which would be a success. I most certainly do. The Magi of old used to craft such holy vessels to contain the essence of the divine, the very breath of a god. It is said that it's if such a relic, a relic can, one can breathe life into any machine. Truly a rare and valuable find. Hmm. See, me not killing that bloke really paid off. The Deaconess is not satisfied with your answer. Now tell me. 
Why is that a law master? Why is why is it that a law master shows up on our doorstep just when we need one the most? Because the law master we were waiting for has never arrived. I've heard a lot about Delia, but I didn't think that he was this crafty, is he? Let's try persuasion. Oh, well, that's going to fail horribly. Persuasion. Tyrion is a small town. Master Thing is lucky to have Lord Antidus patronage. The rest of us have no choice but to seek. Let's try that. Now. I almost believe you said the Victorian before turning around and walking away. Right, so that's failed. I can try and sneak in, but there's like four guys. How am I supposed to do this? Let's try sneaking. Right, they saw me try and sneak in, they're all alerted. So I can't do this at present, I'm going to have to try and come back at a later date. Let's try and at least review the stupid idiot that's got himself kidnapped. This is turning into an absolute disaster. Look, see, like, there's five blokes here, now there's six blokes. How am I supposed to fight six guys? You enter a small camp in the forest clearing, roughly bo rough boards nailed to nearby trees for crude perimeter fence. Inside the fence are several patches of tents, campfire, and a local. Sorry, a metal cage hanging from a mix of gallows. The cage is occupied by a roughed up man in a dirty tunic. Where is this? Ah, uh, there he is. Talk to Eb Bensu, he's, he's back there. He's the boss. Several raiders in battered armor and armor acknowledge your presence by getting up and loading their crossbows. A grey-haired man with military posture emerges from one of the tents, assesses the situation, he barks some orders, swearing at his men and sending them to take positions around the camp. Within moments, some semblance of military order is created. Satisfied, the leader turns his attention to you. The prisoner. Hand him over. Yeah, well, that's going to go well. No point trying to critical strike him because he'll basically kill us. And even if we do kill him, there's still like four other blokes or five other blokes surrounding us who won't survive. I'm here to negotiate. We found this fine young man walking along in, in these very dangerous woods. When he told us that he's a nephew of the local lord, we decided to keep him company and do our best to ensure his safety. I'm sure his uncle would appreciate our help and reward our generos generously. A thousand coins should be enough, I think. I shall pass on the message. Try to convince them, he says to Raider, for his sake, he adds, nodding to the prisoner. So I was taking a drink of my water. And here we are, back in the town. So... Let us hope that we can per persuade this idiot to actually pay the ransom, or everything's going to be really badly wrong. So I don't know about you, but I really do not fancy. So it's quick round. I really do not fancy trying to take on six guys. Yes, yes, yes. Talk to Dealer. What do you want about the bandit camp? They want money, 1,000 Imperials. Out of the question. Paying ransom is a sign of weakness and an, an invitation for some more trouble. We can't afford that it at the moment. Well, I can't persuade him because my persuading skill is terrible. Let's try anyway. Well, no, because I'll fail. What do you want me to do then? Can you handle them? Don't think so. There's, there's too many of them. I guess we'll have to do it ourselves. You've seen the camp. Not much. A small fire, fenced off, two ways in, well guarded. I saw five or six men, but there could be more. The 
not go well, says one of them grimly. We hit them hard. But we were, were, were ready and met us with several volleys of bolts. We lost five men, Dahlia winces, but the raiders were dead. Tiberius was dead by the time we reached him. It's a fucking disaster, says Dahlia. The old man will be furious. It takes an o a while for him to realise that you're still standing there. What do you want? Don't tell me you're dumb enough to hope for a ward. Fuck off. Oh, well, that's pleasant. I mean, what does he actually expect me to do at this point, to be honest? I mean... I don't have the skills to take on six blokes. It's just not going to happen, so... He can take his opinion of himself and... Hop off a ledge. So I don't care. <sighs> but now, they're all going to be blaming me. It's like, oh, you didn't save the... What's this? Preach you. See a man attempting to preach to a crowd of curious onlookers. He clamps onto a pile of rocks. Better to make himself heard. Despite that it doesn't seem to be going well, he is having to shout over the jeering. Stay and listen. Look around you, he booms, face reddening with frustration. What more do you need to realise that we're on the wrong path? For thousands of years we have tried to build a better world for ourselves, for our children. For the thousands of years we have, for thousands of years we have failed. What is left of mankind? Its great works, our glorious empire, ruins, rubble, and dust. For emphasis, he kicks a stone from a pile. He stands on, and it clatters noisily to the cobblestones. The crowd momentarily hushed by his vehemency. Open your eyes, all of you. See mankind for what it is, lost, stumbling through the darkness, a darkness that is our own foolishness, our own foolish wicked natures, blinding us. We have no light to guide us out of this misery, no shepherd to lead us to greater for greener pastures. In our arrogance we build monuments to the glorif to glorify our own pride. Gilded halls of vanity and excess, we believe that our palaces would be eternal impervious to the tide of time and fate that sweeps aside all mere mortal accomplishments. As frail as a summer flower we are, yet we believe ourselves as mighty lions, golden and proud, the entire world ours to stalk and prey upon. In our pride we forgot our pact with heaven. We forgot that with the very first kingship came from the gods, we forgot that those same gods scorned their power. Worse, we believed ourselves to be gods. We held our empire to be to equal to heaven itself. We are not gods equals. We are but beggars before the divine, the lowliest of the low. We must seek their forgiveness, beg them to turn not to turn not from us, as they have turned away from the corruption of the old empire. The man is gesturing wildly, now eyes burning with zeal, and for a moment more, the spell holds the crowd subdued in the face of his conviction, but only for a moment. So what would you have us us uh, what sorry what would you have us do then now do now exactly someone yells breaking the spell fancy words or fancy words are all well and good but it, we don't, I, I don't see any god coming down to help me till my fields or feeding my children laughter ripples through the crowd and the man deflates slightly shaking his head expressing expressing mournful he, he points to, to naysayer have you not been listening have you not ears on your head it is not God's place to serve us. It's, it is. Uh, it is up to us to serve the gods, and we are willing. Oh, uh, in fact, we are willing to serve them faithfully once more. Yes, but how? Another voice, less derisive this time. Question genuine. How will we bring God's favor again, priest? Some in the crowd are leaning forward now, attentive, seeking his chance. The preacher spreads his arms, chin high, and chest puffed out. The gods are waiting, they wait for a sign of our renewed devotion. Discard your false pride, people of Tehran. Open your hearts to heaven. Turn away from your false lords and masters, for no one so no man who is not ordained by the gods is fit to lead. None by vo but those chosen and blessed by the wisdom of heaven can faithfully guide mankind back into the divine light of righteousness. Only they can deliver us from you want us to turn on Antidus? The heckler interrupts him again. Are you mad, old man? If the guards hear you, you will be strung up outside the palace for the crows to feast on, and us with you. Stay and listen. Opinion turn is turning to on, on the priest. Angry muttering sweeps through the assembly. And, w and which blessed man would you have, have lead us? That lunatic Miru? That is, that is your chosen one? Don't mock what you don't understand, foolish one. 
Lord Miro has seen the light and embraces its wisdom. He is the first of the, hu of the humble and devoted, guided by the great prophet Nabu Pulasar himself. The prophet is the hand of heaven and in, in the mortal realm, a living conduit between our world and the gods themselves. It was the gods who commanded Nabu Pulasar, Nabu Pulasar to travel to Gen Geniza where he reveals reveal himself to Lord Meru and guides him towards the blessed path. Bah, we've we've got enough prophets here in Tehran, you can't throw a stone without hitting three of them. The crowd roars in mirth. As the as the preacher's face face purples in rage. Laugh then, fools. But you haven't but you haven't stood in the presence of the divine as I have. Go to Genza yourself and hear Lord Meru speak. The Lord, the hands of the gods rest upon his shoulders. All who hear him fall to their knee and weep in the joyous redemption he offers. I think we've heard enough, old fool, the heckler, the heckler again. He spits in contempt at the man's feet and turns, smirking, and pushes his way through the crowd. At this, the crowd begins to disperse, grinning and making jokes. Talk to the priest. Sighing, the old man steps down from his mixed platform, looking over. One man? The old man addresses his question at the sky above. Is that all you give me? What did you expect, preacher, you say? They have heard this story before, a dozen times a week at least. This story? No, not this story. The lies of Salatans, yes, but I have bring them to tr the truth of the gods. It brings them hope, mercy, a chance to reveal our world. What do they offer in return? Mockery. Mm, which one should we choose? You choose. What makes your story so different? Calm down, friend. It didn't mean any offense. I'm genuinely curious. Tell me about this god of yours. Let's try this one. Would a be would a silent and story convince Lord Meru? Do you not think a lord has a dozen cunning men whispering in his ear? Day and night, do you think such a man would be con convinced by mere tricksters? And yet Lord Meru now devotes his life and house to the divine wisdom revealed to him by the prophet Nabu Polusar. Is that not proof of the power of the god's message? Well, there may be something to your story, or perhaps Lord Meru is mad, as they say, I do not know. They ask... Then ask your questions. Ask, and I shall speak of the re revealed wisdom of the prophet Nabulusar, Nabu Pulusar, best I can, as best I recall it, and perhaps you will find the truth you seek. Uh, why did the gods leave? Why haven't we seen them again? If they wish to help us, why did they leave us to starve and struggle? The gods do not serve men, it is men that must serve gods. They destroyed the Quintari demons as a demonstration of their internal mercy, but they expect us to take the next step. We must show the gods that we are ready to serve them once more. We must cast out the false lords and parasites who still seek to turn men from their true purpose. Only once we have sown, we are ready will gods return to us. You speak of false lords. The Magi may be dead, but the corruption they created leaves up, lives on. Greedy men, hearts close to the wisdom of heaven, still seek to rule us. They squabble over power and riches, and they sneer at the servants of the true gods. Their corruption is what prevents the faithful from building a new world, a paradise where all are safe, content, and well fed. Only one, Lord Meru, has seen the light, rejecting the old ways, and devotes himself to the true path. Your words have convinced me, have given me a lot to think about, Preacher. All my life I have seen evidence that the world is hard and cruel, but the power gets, the, but the powerful get, oh, sorry, but the powerful get to where they are by exploiting the weak. If there is another way, but I can't believe in your word alone. I need to see it for myself. I understand, child. I too had trouble believing until I heard the words of Holy Nebu Polisar. Witness for your, myself the fruits of Lord Meru's wisdom and justice. Travel to Genzar. See for yourself. I soon. I am soon to return to the holy city myself. Find me there, and you have the answers you seek. 
House Karas's reputation has increased. Walk away. Hmm, that was interesting. So, let's see. House Crassus, our reputation with them has increased. Withdrawing from war and politics, House Crassus dedicated itself to science and to arcane research, particularly in the planes of existence. Consequently, they were instrumental in the summoning, having constructed the portal that and many machines have powered it. Most magi, magi mages perished in the last the last days, depriving the house not only of generations of wisdom and research, but of clarity and focus. Today, House, house Grassus calls for proper worship and restora restoration of the gods. Hmm, that's interesting. I think that's going to be about it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I know not the most action-packed episode, but at the moment we're in a bit of a tight situation with what we can sort of accomplish. So, next time we shall probably sign up with the Imperial Guard, even though they look pretty brutal, to be honest. Um, we could try and also do the mine mission, but at the moment I don't think we have the skills to pull it off. We might be able to try and sneak into the compound, but there's a lot of guards. Though that might be a weakness if we can try and get that open. Um, I've been Cornish Knight. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at the links provided below. I will catch you all next time on the next episode of An Age of Decadency. Goodbye. <laughs>